here to tell us about the Hebrew Israelites. So I can't, I'm, I'm excited about that. Um, so first and foremost, I find your name, Pastor Majors, very interesting. Where does that name come from? And what does, does it mean anything or how did that come about? Well, it kind of stuck. Um, I was a, um, a, a artist, a rapper, and I went from street rapping to gospel rapping. And so that was kind of my name, Majors. And so when I started uh, pastoring and started doing uh, teaching stuff, so people knew me as Majors. And so the pastor Majors kind of was kind of how the name came about. And I never dropped the name or anything like that I and, and whatnot. So um, most people that don't know me as the artist, they know me uh, as Moray, William Brown, Moray means teacher. Um, and Pastor Majors, those who know me as the artist, um, they still call me Majors or Pastor Majors. So uh, either or, it depends on what you know me as or how you met me. Um, it, the name could be interchangeable depending on who, who's, who you're talking to. Gotcha. Okay. Well, it seems pretty fitting either way, you know, um, kind of like you were destined to do what you are doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How did you make the switch from like the rapper to the gospel rapper? Like what made you, you know what I'm saying? Like change that? Well, it was, um, to be honest with you, I met a brother um, when I came to Atlanta and he had a studio and um there was a, a song that a, a, a track that he had he he built he created, um, and the style of it um, required some form of um, spirituality to it, some form of kind mm -hmm. of gospelness to it. Um, and if you're an artist, you know every rapper is pretty much uh, has some form of song that it has some form of religious uh, connotation to it or something like that. Um, and so that was that type of song. So everywhere I went to perform that particular song, um, people was like feeling that song. Okay. Um, and then uh, a friend of mine invited me to their church. Like, man, would you rap that song at the church? And I'm like, rapping at the church? Would you? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> like, what are you saying? <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Yeah. And so, you know, I, I did it in, um, you know, from that 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 day forward, you know, it was just something that was just in me, just kept pulling me and tugging at me. And so I ended up um, getting with him and created another song, created another song. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. It kind of pulled me uh, into, um, you know, the the, the church, uh, per se. Okay. Even though I grew up in church, you know, you kind of grow up, we all kind of go occasionally you know, this, that, and the third, but not actually just kind of like walking it and being serious about it. Mm -hmm. And that kind of brought me into the seriousness of, of the, the church and getting dedicated uh, oh. uh, to the Most High and, and the Bible and things like that. So the music kind of pulled me in and then it kind of went from there. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, so when I hear... Hebrew Israelite when somebody says oh yeah he's a Hebrew Israelite I mean just in me I mean I know it's like stereotyping and I'm sorry but what I think of is like somebody on the corner with a microphone speaking very loudly and passionately about so somebody you God. Google or YouTube basically. probably because I haven't <laughs> studied it you know what I'm saying so can you as you know a teacher a pastor what is the Hebrew Israelite religion all about? What is this? What well, is mo if you talk to an Israelite, they're first going to tell you it's not a religion. Okay. First thing they're going to tell you. Um, it, they're going to tell you it's a culture. Um, it's a way of life. And, and you know, Hebrew, it would be, they would tell you it's the language. Israelite would tell you it's the nation. Um you're not going to find Hebrew Israelite in the Bible in a combination. Okay. Uh, you'll find it uh, separate. Um, and so um, Hebrew would, would be descendants of Eber or Eber would come from uh, Hebrew. And you will find that Abraham was a Hebrew, but he was not an Israelite. And so 
Um, most people um, with, that you would would speak with, um, they'll just give you a rundown that every the way of life dealing with the commandments in the Bible, it's it's the instructions are designed to live by them, not per se to uh, treat them religiously. Um, mm -hmm. Me uh, loving my neighbor or loving my brother and my sister as myself would not be a religious duty. That's something that you live by. Just, something yeah. you um, not stealing uh, is something that you live by. It's not something that you, you know, you do and things like that. So when you look at the commandments, um, it's a way of life, how we, how we treat them, how we treat others and others treat us and vice versa. So the commandments are structured around a community type system where we love each other. Uh, and we honor each other by these uh, commandments. It's not rules um, per se, or it's not bondage, but it helped governs us uh, accordingly as um, brothers. Hey, Mora Shante. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Okay, all right. So then do you all um, preach from or Read, teach from the Bible, or is there a different book that you all um, yes learn from? from okay, Bible. yeah, from the Bible. Um, you have Messianics, um, and you have non Messianics. So, uh, non Messianics would mostly deal with the Old Testament, um, they won't deal with the New Testament, and then you have Messianic Israelites, such as myself, who deal with the totality of the Bible, um, from Genesis to Revelation, okay. Okay. And is there a preferred, like, is it uh, the, like King James version? Is that what? Uh, most, yeah. Most Israelites, um, most Israelites rich strictly free from the KJV, but in our assembly, um, we embrace um, all translations. Um, we look at them, we read them. Uh, we look at the Greek, we look at the Hebrew, we look at uh, the Amplified. The only the only translation that we don't deal with in our assembly is the NIV, uh, okay. and in the Message Bible. Everything else uh, is pretty much we deal with, and we look at it as being authoritative at, to uh, to an extent um, where we can get understanding from it. So, in one setting, you may see me teach, and I may read from the Amplified. Then I may also uh, read from the, the New Living Translation. Then I may read from the the English uh, standard translation, it just depends on what uh, the message is and the clarity and how we want to present it. Uh, but first and foremost, the foundation is to go back and look at the Hebrew and really see what the Hebrew is saying. And then we match it up with the manuscripts and make sure the manuscripts that was translated from the Hebrew um, uh, is saying the same thing. Same thing. Mm -hmm. And when we look at the Greek, um, and make sure that it's saying the same thing. Okay. So are, are Hebrew Israelites Christians? Well, it depends on which one you talk to. Okay. Some Hebrew Israelites identify as Christian because in Acts, it talks about the first Christians being Israelites. Mm. In that they were the first believers who believed in Messiah. And so you could talk to some Israelites and they'll say, yes, we're Christian. With the original Christian, other Israelites say, "No, I'm not a Christian. Mm -hmm. I don't. They don't want to be associated with the what they consider as the zoo, um, that, you know, kind of like the Paula White type stuff. So they don't <laughs> want to be construed as a Christian. So um, they they want to identify themselves uh, as an Israelite more so than they want to be labeled a Christian. Okay. All right. And so as far as God is concerned, do you believe in God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit? Like, how does the belief work as far as God is concerned? Is it um, one God? Is it multiple gods? Yeah, well, it, some Israelites, they believe that they don't believe or even want to be associated with the title of Trinity. Mm. Uh, the concept there is in the scriptures but some don't want to be identified with the title of it because of the fact that they want to get as far as way as what they believe is, you know, it's Christianity, Christianity as possible. But if you talk to them, most of them, you listen to them and you're like, but you believe in the concept, yeah. you know, 
but the title is they just want to shun away from. Um, within our assembly, yes, we believe that um, that the Father, the uh, the greatest of all, the Most High, Amen. is. We believe that the Son, which many Jesus, which we call Yeshua or Yahusha, um, and depending on what Hebrew you talk to, they may say Yahweh Shai. Um, we believe that he's God and we believe that the Ruach, HaKodesh or the Holy Spirit is God. So um, in that aspect, again, it, it kind of depends on who you talk to. And so the same thing with me, I approach every Christian um, as brand new. So I would not assume what every Christian believes. I would rather talk to each one of them to get an understanding of what they believe. So that way I can make sure that I properly uh, understand and not misjudge them. Uh, mm-hmm. Unright- mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and then to a, another question I had is what, I guess, what is the, and this may be a far off question, but what is the difference between, between, or can it be the same? Can it be, is it interchangeable between um, a Hebrew Israelite and a Jew? <laughs> I'm, I, I listen. I'm so green to. Yeah, yeah, I, I understand. Um, well, you'll find that um, in antiquity, in ancient times, you will find that the term not the term Jew was generally associated with Judah, with okay, the tribe Judah. Um, then later on, you find in the New Testament, um, it will become a blanket title for every Israelite, no matter what nation it is. Um, Henceforth, in today's time, uh, many Israelites um, don't want to be associated with the title Jew because everybody knows. And nowadays, everybody identifies the Jews as the European Ashkenazis who are in the land of Israel today. So most Israelites will be rather be identified as an Israelite. So you don't get it confused that, you know, they're not the same. We're not the same as them, or we don't hold the same beliefs as they do. Okay. Well, thank you for that clarification. I really appreciate that. Um, because I literally, I, I don't know. I don't know a lot about right. Hebrew Israelites. What I have heard is um, that, you know, we, uh, that the Hebrew Israelites believe that we are, and when I say we, I'm talking black people, yeah. uh, are the original people. And I mean, I don't know what, um, is to be said about that. Are we the original people? We're, I believe that only because just because I read the Bible and it is very scientific that all humans came yeah. from a, a black woman, but that's just me. But it doesn't have anything to do with the Hebrew Israelite, you know, uh, enlightenment. It's just science for me. Right. Um, I mean, it's, it's kind of difficult because I know some, some Israelites believe that all black people um, in the Americas or whatnot are um, Israelites. Um, me, per- I don't take the approach um, that every black person, because I don't know where you come from. I don't know. Mm-hmm. You no, know, I can't say, you know. And so most people depend upon <clears throat> um, asking you, what is your lineage? What, you know, who is your mother? Who is your, me personally, here, here's, here's the way I view things dealing with scripture, okay? Scripture teaches us in Exodus, there was a mixed multitude that came out of Egypt. It wasn't just Israelites that came out of Egypt, but it was also other nations that came out of Egypt. When they came out of Egypt, the Most High said that there will be one law for the stranger, which would be identified as a foreigner or a non-Israelite, and there will be one law for the stranger and one law for the Israelite. As long as the stranger and the foreigner lives amongst Israel, they had to follow the exact same laws that Israel had, once they do that and commit to that and be circumcised, also we are as Israelites are to view them as Israelites. So it no longer does it matter about where do you descend from, if if you are Hamite or if you if you live amongst Israel and accept our our God, then we are to view you as such. It's not a color thing. It's not any of that because. The Bible does not hold to the view of modern day times in dealing with race. The Bible deals with nations. So when we look at that and we see, brothers and sisters, it don't matter what color you are, okay, 
If you accept the, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and you're keeping the commandments and you accept the Savior as your Messiah, then you are my brother, my sister, and I am to treat you as an Israelite. I don't supposed to treat you any different, meaning that the promises that I receive, you are to receive the same thing because the God looks at us as the same when we're following his instructions. Mm -hmm. Okay. So like then that. any so anyone can be um, a Hebrew Israelite if they believe in in God, in your God. Now, it depends on what Israelite you talk to. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Some Israelites say that salvation is only for Israel. And that mm -hmm. else, if you nobody if you're another nation, you can't have no salvation. Mm -hmm. So what happens? That means you they believe that you're gonna be their slave in the kingdom. Damn. You know, you're gonna work for them and you're gonna do all this other that's not the that's not the belief that we hold to at boom. Um okay. Us, you know, hey, listen, you know, and we can just we can we can justify our belief by scripture. Of course, many of them uh, who don't believe that they will tell you they can do the same thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All it takes is a simple sit down and look at the scriptures and break them down. And um, and we can go from there and see how it's justified by scripture. But other than that, we don't hold that view. Um, because that's above our pay grade. I don't have the ability <laughs> to look into your DNA and look at your 20th grandfather and all this other stuff. <laughs> what I find out is, is that you'll find there's a lot of people who actually look black, right? But if you go back 10 generations, their forefather may have been a European, hmm. but as time went on, they kept having children with a melanated people mm -hmm. but according to the scriptures you are who your father is so at the end of the day when we start looking at that it doesn't matter if your father and your mother if your if your father is black or an israelite a person and your mother is white and you come out light as your mother according to the scriptures you are considered uh what your father is but at the end of the day you still regardless if you're an Israelite or not, knowing you're an Israelite don't get you any form of salvation. It don't get you in the kingdom. It's just you know who you are, mm -hmm. but you still have to go through Hamashiach. You still have to go through Jesus in order to get salvation. Mm. Okay. Okay. This is so enlightening. Like, so, I so like it this. Sounds, this is yes. So it sounds to me like, okay, so kind of the, the, the Christian religion has like uh, uh, Pentecostal, uh, Kojic, the, the, it, it's all kinds of churches, the Baptists, the Southern Baptists. So it kind of sounds like the uh, uh, Hebrew Israelite also have like, different mm, branches, I guess. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it, it it would be that because, and and truthfully, you know, as Israelites, um, we all don't hold to the same doctrinal views. Mm -hmm. It's no different. It's like I told you, we have non-Messianics and Messianics, but within even the Messianics, there are doctrinal differences um, within even the Messianics. So um, it all depends on... Um, it all depends on who you connect to. It all depends on how you learn, who you came in, who brought you in, who the Holy Spirit used to bring you into the, into the truth. And mm -hmm. the thing is if you're brought in by the wrong person, you're going to take on their spirit. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Teach you from a, mm -hmm. from their perspective, if they have an issue with white people, most of the teaching they're gonna they're going to disciple you to have an issue with white people, even if you never had an issue with white people. <laughs> you, may, you, yeah. you never, you may have never experienced or, or met anybody that was white that was, that done you wrong. All the white people in the world were helpful to you. They they did everything. I mean, good, good people to you. Mm -hmm. And yet I, by somebody who may have had an issue with white people. Now you got an issue with white people. You don't even know why you got an issue with white people. <laughs> you were discipled by somebody who had an issue with white people. Yeah. Uh, Got you. Okay. So then when I was reading, I did a little bit of research um, 
a little bit of reading. I mean, I try not to do too much research because I really want to know and I want to be thirsty for the information. I want you to be able to tell me about your religion. Um, sometimes if you read read about it, you don't ask the questions that need to be asked because you you already read about it and you, you think everybody already knows. Um, but I was surprised to see some of the these famous names um, associated with Hebrew Israelite. Kodak Black caught me totally off guard. Um, Chingy, <laughs> those two are rappers, Funny right? Laugh. Um, uh, Zab Judah, the boxer, um, yeah. he he identifies he Hebrew Israelite. Um, Amari Stoudemire, the the uh, retired basketball player, um, to name a few. So, I guess from what you said, that kind of explains then why the wide variety of people that that identify with Hebrew Israelite, it's possible that they are different, um, I guess, sh can I call them branches, different, uh, what, what, what should I call, different churches? So there's different churches in the Hebrew Israelite community? Um, yeah, I, I guess if you want to, if you want to look at it that way, I, I, or you could maybe we'll say different communities or okay. different assemblies um, within it, you know, you have those who um, Hebrew Israelites who say Jesus, you know, that's, that's their thing. And you have other Hebrews that's, that's forbidden. They, they would not dare to say Jesus. They would dare really? to say Jesus. Um, and so again, it just depends on, um, you almost have to, you know, do your due diligence and, and ask a person like, okay, as an Israelite, okay, what do you believe? What are your beliefs about this? What are your beliefs about that? And so, um, that way they can give you a, a breakdown and then you can start processing and know, okay, well, you know, that that's not the type of uh, community I want to be a part of where they're teaching this, you know, that just doesn't sit right with me. Um, and you have to trust your convictions, you know, mm -hmm. uh, with things and whatnot. And so um, for, again, you know, for us, you know, we, we don't proselytize um, being an Israelite saying, we don't go out and say, Hey, you know what? You know you're an Israelite, don't you? You need to start doing this, doing that. Our thing is we want we want we go out and preach the gospel. We go out and point you to the Savior. And then uh, if you accept him, uh being an Israelite comes easy, you know. Um, because ultimately that's the goal. Ultimately, your salvation, your soul is the goal to get you into the kingdom. But if I introduce you to culture and never introduce you to him. Then I've done it. I've, I haven't done my due diligence, and I've done the disservice not only to you but also to my calling. Okay, okay. And the Savior being Jesus from your church. Well, in our church, um, you'll you'll come in our church, and you'll have, you'll see some Israelites that may say Jesus. Um, small group, but majority of the time you'll hear uh, Yeshua. Um, okay. You know, in our church, and and often it just kind of depends. If we're and, and here's the thing: if we're reading from the Bible, when when we're reading from the Bible, um, we don't make it a conscious effort to be like, uh, uh, let me <laughs> say Jesus. You know, we don't we don't do that. So sometimes we'll read, and then in this in the same chapter, in verse thirteen, we may say Yeshua. Then verse fifteen, we may say Jesus while we're reading. But everybody in the assembly know who we're talking about. Gotcha. Also yeah. know that the most high know who we talking about. He ain't mm. dumb. You know, he's mm -hmm. not he's the most intelligent being that we know. So even if we never even say his name, even if we just cry out and call and say, Help me, he know who we're talking about. Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. And so uh that's kind of the way we view things at Boom. Okay. And, and I'm glad you mentioned Boom. Boom is a very um uh, different, unique name. Where did that come from, and what does it does Boom mean anything? And then, how broad is your church or your assembly? Yes, um, Boom is it, it's an acronym for Believers of One Messiah, um, and so that was just the focus on making sure that we uh, elevate uh, his name as possible, so people don't get it confused. Um, that we believe in multiple deities or anything like that. But um, we want to make sure we put the stamp on it that we are believers of one Messiah. 
Mm -hmm. um, and so the name came about, we were just, me and my wife, we were just kind of sitting in the office and um, I forgot, it was kind of just, it kind of just popped up, just kind of popped out of nowhere. At first, I think the, um, the name, yeah, the name came first and then we, um, the acronym came after that. Uh, and then, so I just ran with, we just ran with the acronym and the acronym is kind of what got people, uh, you know, attention more so um, oh, yeah, than the name. Oh, yeah. And so like, boom, like, so when, you know, when people say yeah. it, they kind of remember that, you know, um, and whatnot. And I thank the father for, uh, dropping that wisdom down on us. Yeah. Yeah. It definitely caught my attention <laughs> when I was yeah. looking, I was like, okay, I like that. I'm, I'm, I like acronyms and things like that because this is pieces of she podcast. And of course, this is not for females. Okay. Um, the she stands for shared human experience. I feel like we're all humans and we're experiencing this thing called life together. And I just love talking to different people that have uh, different experiences and different backgrounds, different religions, different everything, just so we can kind of understand each other because we have to live here together, you right. know? So I love it. But yeah, um, we're, we are in, um, we're in Atlanta. Okay. We have an assembly in Atlanta. We have an assembly in Jacksonville, Florida, of course. Um, we have an assembly in Fort Lauderdale. Uh, we have an assembly in, in Akron, Ohio. Um, we have an assembly in uh, Houston. Um, oh, we have where at in Houston? On what side? Southwest? Uh, don't, don't, I, I don't, 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 okay. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> Houston, Texas, more at Obadiah. I don't know if he's on here uh, right now. Um, uh, but he's, he's, uh, what's up? What's going on, Joy? That's brother Joy. What's going on? Um, but yeah, in Houston. And then we also have an, an assembly in Nairobi, Kenya. So, uh, oh, wow. Okay. That's, have that's, you been to that one? Oh, actually, we were going this year, but COVID oh. kind of knocked a lot of things out of the way for us. So. Gotcha. Speaking of COVID, how are you guys uh, getting gathering now? Are you gathering virtually or has things kind of calmed down where you guys are and, you, and you're able to kind of socially distance and, and, and commune together? Um, we, we, got, we, we do virtual, but... Uh, the virtual is only for those that don't live in in Atlanta or live in Jacksonville or whatnot. We've never stopped gathering. Mm -hmm. um, it's been a blessing for us because we've been able to socially distance. Um, you know, we go the cleaning process, uh, you know, spraying stuff down, um, you know, wipes, mask, different things like that. Um, so we just we never stop, never stop worshiping. And it's been a blessing. Um, we haven't been affected uh, and whatnot. God and so, is good. South Carolina. Y'all got one yeah. in South Carolina? <laughs> no, I think she's in North Carolina. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, into the existence. There you go. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, um, that's pretty much what we've been blessed to be able to um, to have, you know, be able to do that. Um, and, and not miss a beat and um, haven't had any, you know, major sicknesses, anything like that. It's just, it's really been a blessing. The father's kept us. That's wonderful to hear um, because it's, it's been crazy out here. Um, what I haven't, I don't think you mentioned any states on the West coast. What's up with that? <laughs> I'm well, here in, in, in Las Vegas. <laughs> well, here's the thing. I actually was about three years ago. I was actually in Vegas. I think it was really. Three. When was that shooting in Vegas? Was that three? Uh, uh, it's that about, was. I think it's two, been about two or three. Two or, two or three. Two or three years ago. Yeah. I was in Vegas about. I was in Vegas, um, doing a conference there, uh, the week before the shooting. Wow. And um, the conference, it was it was awesome because it was some things said at the conference that kind of manifested during that time of the shooting. Um, but, you know, Brother DeAndre, uh, I've been knowing him for mm -hmm. uh, for a couple of years and 
and whatnot. He's like a little brother to me. And so we and him are, you know, talking and and kind of, you know, working out some things or whatnot, working through some things. So the goal and the plan is to have a boom in Vegas. So Okay. What, Good. What's going on? So we'll see how that turns out uh and whatnot. And um I'll keep you guys posted. Okay. All right. Uh, Okay. Well, I guess I have to tune in virtually until then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I always try to learn, you know, learn more. Even after like the show, I just, you know, maybe do like a follow up and just kind of see. Um, I actually attended a, a Baha'i uh, thing, cousin Mo. We did Baha'i last Baha'i two last weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Yeah, that was interesting. <laughs> Absolutely. So. Um, so that's, that's wonderful. So if someone wanted to be a part of your, uh, assembly and, and they're not, um, in, in the places where you are physically, how, how do they do that? Just, just virtually um, or, do, or do people meet with them virtually? How does that work? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we pretty much, uh, we have a private group, um, in our, um, Facebook, where we do all of our live videos for all the assemblies. Um, and we did, we set it up that way because you have all the trolls and, mm-hmm. men, and so we just end up doing a, a private group. And if anybody that um, gets into that group, they have to either probably, you know, either know someone that's a member of the assemblies uh, or if they do submit, they have to, there's a questionnaire, a three uh, question three question questionnaire that kind of ask, you know, how did you hear about us? Um, you know, what are your doctrinal beliefs in these, you know, two areas? And then um, uh, after we review it, if everything's a go, um, then we'll can, we can add you to, to, to the group and um, you can watch uh, the services um, from there uh, every Sabbath. Gotcha. Okay. I do have uh, a question. I'm yeah. oh, sorry to cut you off. No, when was Boom established? Like, when did you guys establish Boom? Um, three years ago, February the 3rd uh, was the official date, but Boom kind of started um, by me touring. Um, oh. I, uh, I was actually for like nine, probably eight, nine months out of the year, um, almost at least uh, twice a month. Uh, I would be traveling from state to state doing conferences, teaching uh, on uh, different teachings uh, and things like that. And so it kind of grew from there and people started asking, hey, you know, um, uh, when are you going to be next? Uh, you know, <laughs> you know, and so when it came down to start to start, start the church or whatnot, um, we had already had relationships with kind of people, brothers and sisters. Uh, some of them are my leaders um, now, you know, at the assemblies like uh, Morai Shante. Mm-hmm. Um, he, she's also a leader in Jacksonville. Um, and um, some of the other brothers and sisters, uh, Minister Casey, who's on here, he's in Atlanta. So, you know, we kind of met that way and they kind of traveled and supported. So when it was time to do the church, start, start, the, start the church, we already kind of had been relationship. Yeah, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's dope. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll tell you, it's been very enlightening, and I so appreciate you coming on here and giving us a background. I have a very different uh, now when someone says Hebrew Israelite, I won't it's automatically you. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I will think differently. I will think yeah. differently. Um, what are what are some truths and myths? I guess about the Hebrew Israelites that you want to clear up. <laughs> like it's a whole bunch. People just be lying. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's the top ones. Like, what what are some things that people like get wrong about you guys that you wish people didn't get wrong? One that you don't like um, the most. One uh, that we're all polygamous. Um, mm. Two that we all believe that the white man is the devil. Mm-hmm. Uh, three that we view the Christian church as, um, you know, all wicked and just, you know, have no, have no righteousness about it at all. Um, and, uh, three, uh, four is that we look down on women. 
Mm. Uh, so these are some of the, um, you know, things that, that are kind of popular. Um, and when people say Hebrew Israelites, um, you hear those, <laughs> those type of things. <laughs> you hear those type of things. Um, but, you know, for us, um, all of us don't 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 believe that. Some of us uh, do believe um, in empowering our sisters and things like that. So, okay. Um, so then, so women then in your can women hold a um, leadership role like a pastor or teacher? Uh, in Boom, we have um, we have two moras, which is the female aspect of the teacher, uh, Mora Shante and Mora Dakota. Um, Dakota is in Ohio, uh, and Mora Shante is in Jacksonville. Um, th both of them have uh, have husbands as their heads. Uh, I'm just kind of the overseer, um, um, leader um, of 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 both of them um, and their husbands. Uh, but ultimately, their husband is their head. So um, at the end of the day, you know, I don't prescribe. I don't believe that um, a woman should pretty much leave without being married, having some form of husband or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. that that's kind of something that uh, I hold as as a boom. Um, but that's not something that's that I would say that's gospel that, you know, that should be across the board. It's just. There's just certain uh, parameters uh, within our assembly that we believe should be held upon. Um, and so in front of our assembly, yeah, I mean, but, you know, um, um, we believe in that. You know, we, we now if there also has to be a a obvious uh, um, display that the most high has called you to teach. Like you have to mm -hmm. um, be able to uh, reside in that office. You know, it's not something that you go in and out of or something that you, you just desire yourself, but it has to be confirmed as well through, um, you know, the leadership and, and things like that. And we have deacons and elders who are leaders. Um, and so when I, um, you know, come to them, and discuss them, discuss some things. Uh, there's some things that I don't that I don't do um, without um, you know talking to my elders and my deacons to make sure that um, that everything is good. We're on the same page, even though I'm the founder. Um, I still uh, believe in biblical uh, establishment and structure that mm -hmm. you have you need elders and deacons in place. Um, to give just understanding the second ideas and second opinions and things like that. And so we operate as such.